Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarten with Weingarten Racing with another product review video. And today's head is the small block Chevy RHS 235cc head. In case you're wondering where these come from, uh, if you or anybody else, uh, this happens to be a customer, sends in a head, it costs 30 bucks, I'll flow the head, I'll do a video. And it takes about a week to two weeks, depending on what's going on to get it done. This guy sent in three heads, a Pro Max Shocker 225 CNC ported head, which you can go back and look. Not a Rock 210 CC head. Um, I've done a video on. I don't know if I po will post it before this one. And then this head, the RHS 235. I really do like this head. This head, in case you're wondering where all these came from, um, you can go back in time. This is some of the history, and I might have some aspects wrong, but I'm fairly certain I've got most of it right. Back in the like a long time ago, probably 90s or whatever. Pro Top Line was this company and they were made in New Zealand and they made cylinder heads in aluminum and in cast iron and they made really good heads. Well, eventually they decided to sell out and they sold their heads to RHS. So RHS bought them. RHS then later gets bought by Comp Cams and then Comp Cams gets bought by Elder Rock Group and they're part of that group now too. Anyway, Pro Top Line developed this head. Don't ask me which designer did it. But they developed this head, and to be quite honest with you, it was pretty good. So, especially when it came out, because not only did they offer this in aluminum, they also offered in cast iron. And for those who are in the circle track world will know that um, at the time, there was really only three cast iron heads that were available for a circle track guys, because they're not allowed to run aluminum in most classes. And you had the RHS, you had the Dart Iron Eagle, and then you had the EQ. And the RHS, in my opinion, was better than most of them. Um, in most cases the eq kind of caught up because they made a revision it was really good the iron eagles were really good too the catch is they um were way more expensive than both eq and rhs so eventually though rhs said you know what we're done with the cast iron stuff and gave that up altogether they sold some of their patterns to eq like the big block side but i have no idea what happened to the small block side because it's since faded eq in the meantime decided they're no longer going to make um, certain heads, and they've eliminated the racier heads that they used to have. So that's kind of some of the backstory. However, the aluminum side, RHS kept making the aluminum heads. And I have to blame them on this. If they had been better at advertising and marketing, these things would still be selling regularly, also getting supply. I'm talking pre-COVID. Long before COVID happened, they had a hard time getting this head and any of the other aluminum heads they had. I don't know what the issue was, and it doesn't really matter. The only point is there was a demand, and there was other heads that were easily available, so people weren't gonna wait. Back then, they didn't have to wait. They didn't have to wait like four or five months now. You could easily pick up another head. So this head pretty much got put to the wayside from most people's minds because you couldn't get it. And then RHS and Comp Cams really made no real effort to advertise the head, and it kind of fell to the wayside. So this head, of all the heads we've done, have the least amount of information because, well, they're not really available. Um, I checked right before making this video, and Summit doesn't even have this head listed on their website anymore. So the customer had sent in this information on the head. This is how much the bear cost is, $619. And... If you, that's per one, by the way. And 960 assembled for a high dollar roller. So, I don't know where, he, I think he got this from Comp Cams because I can't find it on Summit. I'm pretty certain Jake's doesn't carry that anymore either. Probably because they didn't want to deal with supply issues and back orders and whatnot. It's a really sad situation because when I show you this head, it's a very good head. And it's sad that it went this way. Part of the reason maybe why RHS and Comp Cams lost interest is because they really had no part in this head. They didn't design it, they just sold it. And I don't think they had any part of the manufacturing. I think they outsourced everything. I don't think this was cast in China ever, but I don't think it was cast in America. It might have been, but I don't think it was. Someone had told me once it was cast in England, which might have been. It might have been cast in America. But I know, I don't think, RHS or comp cams even did the valve jobs or anything. The only thing they probably did was assemble. So if you don't have a part in development and anything else, you could see why they might lose favor. Now, granted, these are all my opinions. I could be wrong. 
But let's get to the actual head itself, what's on it. I'm showing you this stuff with it knowing that you probably will never see this head and be able to buy it like this anyway. So this is the 235 version. They actually had a couple versions. They had a 185, a 200, a 220, and a 235. So this is the biggest one that they had and at the, for a long time, and I think it still might hold this. I think it's the biggest as cast head you used to be able to get as far as CC size. Anyway, it's got a nice ID locator, which is great. Love those. Those are really good for locating the springs. It's got good seals on it too. That's a positive. This must be new because I hadn't seen this before. Usually they only have this pattern on it, but now they have the Vortec one on. And they can kind of get away with it because this opening here that you see, it's not gasket matched. It's not CNC blended or anything like that. But it is bigger than a 1206 as far as height. What? No. But height is bigger than a 1206. So if you're running a 1206 gasket, you're going to have to trim a little bit off the top to make it kind of fit. Uh, they did that to get more area at the push rod pinch, although it's still really small. So there's this side. But let's flip it around and I'll show you the chamber side so we can talk about it because I actually do really like this head. This is the chamber side. Uh, these are 64 cc's and it has an angle plug. This chamber looks similar to what's with AFR, but not the same. In one of my other uh, videos, someone had commented that this, they, AFR stole this chamber. It couldn't be further from the truth. This chamber is not even close. Well, I mean, it's close, similar, uh, but not the same. They're as close as two twins, but not really. Um, anyway, here I can show you, tell you some of the differences. This part of the chamber might look similar because what you have here in AFR is the same way. If you notice this whole, if I put a circle here where the cylinder was, this whole part gets scooted in and the spark plug gets scooted in. That part's the same. This part is not. Um, AFR has more of a, um, oh, I don't know. It has a cone pretty much coming off the top cut better than this. And also, they also bring this side out more and definitely out more before it starts making the curve. And this is also different as far as the way this, it is. It's further out. Um, so the chamber same shape is similar, but not the same. However, this does bring up a good point though. These heads from RHS, um, because of where this bulge is, there's several dome pistons do not work with this because they are used to like a head, like a, a head, there's not like a Brodex track one or the head hunters or not head hunters, but dragon slayers, the profilers where the chamber, instead of it coming this and scooping in it, it goes this way. It's more like a, like this part's kind of open. And because of that, the dome fills in that area. A lot of domes will hit right here on this head. So due to that, JE made a piston that actually fits these RHS heads. Um, so they also fit with AFRs as well. But that's something that's totally unique to them. Um, just FYI for your information. But however, most people that ran flat tops, it's never an issue anyway. I do like this chamber design, but I will warn you, because we're fixing to flow this anyway, that because of this chamber design, the low lift flow, especially at 400, is never as good as um, the Rodic stuff or the Profiler where it has a chamber out like this. And the reason why is that 400 valve lift, it's here, and this whole spot's blocking the flow out and away. So it opens, it's right in its way. So it eliminates, it, it eliminates some of the area it needs for the air to get out. So the 400 lift number is really not going to be great. As soon as it starts opening more, that it has more path to go around and it cleans itself up and it flows more at peak lift. This chamber is just known for that. It's not bad because in a way it's kind of like, well, it doesn't flow as good at 400 valve lift, but you've got more quench pad area right through here, which helps, you know, burn better. So it's like worse in one area, better than the, in other areas. However, in a dome situation, the dome keeps hitting it anyway, unless you get a special dome for it, which they make. All right, anyway, it's a 208 1600. It's got a top cut that comes off pretty good. It's not a huge ledge, that's not bad. It does have this ledge here, which might hurt flow, but we'll find out. 45 degree valve job. I'll warn you, the thing I don't like about these heads for sure is the valve seat material that they use is hard. So when I go doing the valve job on these, it is the, one of the harder ones to cut. It, um, they look really shiny, but they're really hard to get round. So in other words, the, there might have a, usually it's a low spot right through here and a high over here. Um, cause it's trying to deflect the cutter is from, cause this material is so hard. It's really tricky to cut these, um, at least on my machine, bigger machines, maybe probably not so much. 
Anyway, um, just an FYI too. It has a little bit there, but as you can tell, it's unlike the other heads he sent in, none of them are, this is the only one that's not bowl blended. That's why you've got that ridge there and you've got a ridge there. This one, the exhaust is really gonna hurt flow. I can tell you that for sure. This one, the intake not as mad because it's coming this way, but on the exhaust, yeah. This head typically, because I used to port a ton of these, because um, they're reasonably priced, you can make them flow big amounts of air. That's probably gonna run, around, this thing's gonna flow about 300 CFM. I've got measurements to show you, here they are. The bowl is 88.4%, uh, sorry, not the bowl, the throat. The bowl is 100%, which is kind of how it should be for the size it is. If you look at the area over the short side, 3.22, and I've told you before, if you just drop the decimal, that's usually about what it flows. It won't do that because other things are wrong. But if everything else was right, it would flow about 322. Um, the pinch is small, 2.38 from a 235cc head. Yeah, that's too small, bro. It needs to be like 2.5 or above. Anyway, I'm sure they were just trying to get things to work within the casting. So that's a little low. So anyway, there's this view. Let's look at the exhaust and then we can flow it. This is the exhaust view. It's really not that bad. These are square ports. I'm not a fan of square ports. You know, I'd rather have like an Oval or a D. Uh, they're just, it is what it is. They are raised up a little bit, but other aftermarket heads raise up the exhaust far more. That's why it looks kind of down, at least to me compared to others. Others are up further. Um, usually these exhaust ports are okay. The little bit flow and like a 400, not so good. Um, we'll see though, but that ridge is not helping. Like I could, eh, it's not, yeah, I could feel it. That's not gonna help it for sure. But anyway, we're gonna flow it real quick and we'll see what it does. But there you got that view. I went a little long and rambling on this head because I, I really do, if you're a porter and you happen to find these heads or the pro top line. So in other words, you just take off that name, put pro top line, they were the same head. There might have been small differences about who, how the valve job was done and some of maybe the guide material and seat material. Other than that, they were the same as far as the port. Um, if you get, the, get these, keep them, port them. They're a good head. Do not just chunk these and get the rim. There are so many other heads that are worse than this. And this one, like I said, to my knowledge, besides World Products had a 235cc head, wasn't very good. But this one is the biggest ASCAS small block Chevy head that I know of. Anyway, let's get the flow in it. Here's the RHS head on the bench. Now this one, I flew it on a 4155 bore because it's a 235cc head. Chances are you're probably not gonna put it like on a 388. You may, but you know, I don't think it, most people will. So hence I put it on a 4155 bore, which is a bore size of 406, 421, 434. Uh, no exhaust pipe attached and floated. Here are the numbers. Oh, let me point out one more thing. I didn't show you this, and if you pay attention to my other videos, you know what I'm talking about. The intake valve has no back cut, which made the low lift flow numbers even worse. Keep that in mind. There's no back cut on the exhaust either, but we typically don't put one on there. The other thing I noticed is the rock arm studs are ARP, so that's good. I mean, let's look at the numbers. So the ones I care most about are four, six, and peak. So if we look at four, 221, that's pretty low, um, but, if you fully ported this head, like redid the valve job and everything else, typically what you'll end up with is they're gonna go like 233 to 240. They don't break 240. So it's about 20 CFM down if you ported it yourself. Um, 600 is uh, 284, which isn't bad, just not great, um, especially for the size. And peak, you have 294 C CFM. I can tell you from porting this head several times, the, you can get these to glow easily in the 330 CFM range on my bench. So it might be like 340 on others. Um, if you really put some effort, I think I could get 340 out of them, but I'd probably have to weld up the pinch and stuff. And other people's benches, it might be even higher. The exhaust side, it's pretty pitiful. That ridge hurt it, it's just not good. 400 is 154 and peaks 193. It's pretty low. Even just the height and everything, when you port these, typically the exhaust is in the 230s. So it's about 10 to CFM down from a really nice exhaust port, like from the Dragon Slayer or the Profilers. Um, you can make the intake port from 500 on match like the port of Dragon Slayers and Profilers, just not 400. It's still a really good head, so if you find one, work on it. Anyway, you guys remember, I'm no Superman and you guys take care.